You know what? I felt amazing. I felt amazing. How many of you realise all the stuff that you're ever taught on a Sunday is not for more information? Say this after me. Information never, ever causes transformation. But revelation on truth that burns within me will make me do something that will change me forever. Here are the eight truths. And I'm going to wrap this up for today. Number one. The evidence that you've been filled with the supernatural power of God is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Number two, it is the will of God for you to spend a lot of time praying in the Spirit. Somebody say, in the Spirit. Romans 8, 26, you don't know what you should pray for. He helps your weaknesses. Start to do it and do it with more than you've ever done and watch what God does. Sing in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, work in the Spirit, worship in the Spirit and watch what the Lord does. 1 Corinthians 14, 5, Paul says, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than all of you. You've got to know that you do it a fair bit to be able to make that statement. Number three, Praying in the Spirit will bring cleansing to the inside of your life. It will release utterance in you. So listen, some of the boldest preachers that have ever existed gave themselves to the realm of the Spirit. Smith Wigglesworth being one of them, who was an illiterate plumber, but spent a lot of time praying in the Spirit. And then he began to come forth with utterances that shook the world. See, that is the power of preaching. Can I get an Amen. See, I do, on Sundays, I do preach, teach. But you come with me when there's a huge crowd in a stadium and you'll see pure preacher. Pure preacher. On the streets, pure preacher. But utterance is powerful. Come on, put your hand on your heart. Say, oh God, give me utterance. Give me utterance. Boldness, utterance. I need to pray in the Spirit so that utterance would come out of me in Jesus' name. Writing would come out of me. Prophesying would come out of me. It says holy men and women of God were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Are you inspired on Sunday? Yeah. Hallelujah. So praying in tongues will bring cleansing. Praying in tongues, caught Romans 8, 26, it'll help you where you don't. It'll help you. Who needs help? I need help all the time. Hallelujah. You need understanding? Pray in the Spirit. You'll hit the bullseye every time. Why? Because the Spirit searches the heart. The Spirit searches the mind. The Spirit knows what the mind of Christ is. You don't. Praying with your understanding will definitely send you to sleep. You run out. You know, my wife, bless her, she, she's a kneeling woman. I, I find her all the time. She's kneeling everywhere and praying, which is wonderful. It doesn't work for me, folks. If I'm kneeling, I will fall asleep. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. I wish folks in this church would imitate me. I really do. Because if you did, your prayer life would change from a token of, oh, I've been baptised with the Spirit. I talk in tongues. Totally nice. To the place where you're obsessed with the Spirit of God, where you're obsessed with Jesus, where you want to lock yourself away like Yongi Cho and pray. When I went to Seoul, Korea and crawled into that little hole which were not built for large people. It was tough enough for me to get in. Folks larger than me couldn't get in, which is tough. But I determined I'm not coming out of that, 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 that prayer hole until I'm a different man. And when I came back, who remembers when I came back from Seoul, Korea? I was absolutely caught up with the desire to pray, 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 pray. How many of you understand that, that birthing the things of God is grace? But I'll prophesy to you as I finish this meeting today to bring things into order. You will not enter into a supernatural prayer ministry or a supernatural ministry on five minutes a day. Do you know what? They've done surveys and they've determined that people in the West pray five minutes a day. But people in the East pray at least an hour. Come with me to Seoul, Korea. Come with me to Indonesia. Come with me to India. Come with me to Africa. Where do you see greater manifestations? I'm going, to, I'm going to get you to lift up your hand and say, Pastor's right. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, help me from this message to transform my life at least one solid hour a day where I turn off the phone, I lock everything out, not talk to your wife or anybody else and learn to pray for an hour a day. Lord, help me in Jesus' name. You see, folks, if you will do that, youngsters, older folk, start to worship and sing by the Spirit 
Yeah, your mind might be unfruitful. Your body might get tired. But actually, the truth of the scripture is it won't. Because in Isaiah 28, verses 11 and 12, this is what it says. With stammering lips and another tongue, I will speak to this people. To whom he said, this is the great... I can't read it in my own notes. This is the great uh, rest, I think it is, that you might cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing of my spirit. Oh, there it is there. This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. Say this with me, church. This is the rest with which you cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Look at that. Isaiah was speaking. You see, when you, when you pr- close your eyes and listen, when you pray in the Spirit, it relaxes your body, relaxes your mind. You don't have to think. You cross over into the supernatural. You're not thinking, what do I say next? You're flowing. If you want a health tonic, get into beautiful communion with the Holy Spirit. Put on some ambient music and worship God for an hour in tongues. You'll never be the same again. You know, they, don't, they even did studies recently where they hooked up some people, some people who spoke in tongues. Neurological, scientific studies. And of course, they always try to analyse what the effect was. And here's what happened when they were praying in tongues. The medical people said, we have no idea. I wish I kept the article. said, we have no idea what these people are doing. No idea at all. But while they're praying in the Spirit and doing this stuff, there is a calm and a peace and an energy that's being that's coming through them, which we don't know what it is. While they're praying under the power of the Spirit. Their their blood pressure comes normal. How many of you read that article? It was sent to me. Niazi, dig it up. Research it up again. Folks, did you hear what I said? If you will be baptized in the Spirit of God, don't be distracted now. We're almost finished. That's fine. Don't be distracted. Listen, if you will not be distracted by any other thing, but you learn to just lock yourself away for one hour a day. Come on, say it after me. Lock yourself away for one hour a day. You see, why do we have to bring these messages in Britain and around Western? Because we're not doing what God wants us to do. James 1.22 says, stop hearing the word. Would you start doing it? Can I get an amen? See, we're not in church to hear nice little... Listen, I can preach on marriage seminars and I can preach on all kinds of nice things, how to raise your kids and make them all nice, but that's not what you need. You should be doing that anyway. You should be doing that. What you really need to know is what will stir you and motivate you enough to turn you into a man or a woman of destiny and prayer because God will then bless all the other aspects of your life. See, what's happened is we've now started to develop a church culture that's all nice. And, and it's all niceties in church. All niceties. And nice people and nice families and nice movie night and nice party time. And nice clothes. Nice ha- uh, suburban areas. Nice cars. Uh, 2.2 children. All nice. Nice people don't change the world, folks. Paul wasn't nice. Jesus wasn't nice. I'm not nice. You know that. But anyway, being nice is not what's going to save your neighbor next door. Being nice doesn't get rid of cancer. Being nice doesn't raise the dead. Being nice won't change Watford. Being nice isn't going to change Barcelona. Being nice won't get you to heaven. But being nice might send you to hell. Nice people go to hell. Say after me, nice people go to hell, but saved people, baptized people in the Holy Ghost, change nice people, which really aren't that nice in reality, because if you're not saved, you're not nice. You're just nice according to the culture, but you're still unsaved. You see, the Holy Spirit, number four, is given to you for personal edification. It helps you to be edified, to be built up, to be strong. Number five, the Holy Spirit produces intimate communion with God. It makes you conscious of God, less conscious of yourself. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. If you speak in a tongue, you speak not to men, but to God. Don't forget that. You're speaking to God mysteries that He understands that you don't. You are speaking mysteries. So many testimonies of where people have prayed in the Spirit, have gone another realm, and there have been interactions of God around the earth. 
angelic inter- interventions of God. What does Hebrews 1.14 say? It says that ministering spirits would go forth. Church, how do you think that they go forth? You pray. You start to pray. You start to pray. If you're really burdened about what's going on in Afghanistan, why don't you pray about it in the Spirit? If you're really burdened about human trafficking around the world, why don't you pray about it? Say, Lord, I'm praying for 10 minutes in the Spirit. Who knows what you're dispatching? Who knows what you're releasing? See, I don't want to have a culture in Watford of church on Sunday that's really only interested in the selfish things of this short life that we will live. John Wesley said these words, one short life. Folks, it'll soon be past. Only what is done for Jesus Christ is going to last. Somebody say, I want communion at a deeper, deeper level. Number six, praying in the Spirit will help you to understand and trust God. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, be anxious for nothing. How do you do that? Start to pray in the Spirit. Sometimes, sometimes shut your mind off. Sometimes don't speak. Stop speaking with the understanding. You're actually making the problem worse. Don't speak about those things. Stop it. Start to pray in the Spirit. You know, how many of you want to get to a place where, where, where you cease from negative speech? But you get to a place where you believe God for ridiculous recovery. That you go after what He's got for you. How do you do that? By praying in the Spirit. By pray- Listen, when Conrad Russell was dying of cancer, he didn't talk his way out of it. We prayed our way out of it. We cursed that thing and we prayed our way out of it by the supernatural. When I was dying in a hospital bed, I didn't talk my way out of it. I prayed my way out of it. And I'll tell you now, you will never change your situation by talking your way out of it, reasoning your way out of it. No, you'll pray your way out of it. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas prayed their way out of prison, sung themselves out of prison. You can't get out of that place that you're in unless you learn to step over into the Holy Ghost. Step over for your wife. Step over for your son. Step over for your future. Step over for your community. Step over and start to pray. Praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praying in the Spirit. Number seven, it'll control your emotions. Hey, you know, how many, how many folks, they're, they're up and then they're down. And then they're up and then they're down. And then they're up and then they're down. What is that? No stability of spirit. Dysfunctional. Millions of dysfunctional Christians today. Dysfunctional. No stability. You know what? I just keep doing the same things every day and it works. I get up and I start to pray in the Spirit. I go to bed and I pray in the Spirit. I don't put on the whole armour of God every day. That's a lot of work. I just leave it on. I just, I just keep on praying in the... I keep on worshipping. I keep on in the Word. I keep on loving. I keep on witnessing. I keep on doing the same things every day. Listen to me. The secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. If you want to change your life, change what you're doing now and do what I'm telling you to do and you won't be the same next week. That'll do. And we'll wrap it up on that. Number eight, praying in the Spirit is a marvellous way of giving thanks to God. Come on, stand up with me and lift your hands and start to pray in the Spirit with me. Start to pray in the Spirit with me. Start to pray in the Spirit with me. Start to say, Lord, let the paracletos come alongside me. Help me. Help me, paracletos. Come on, start to lift up your hands. Say, Holy Spirit, focus me, the dove. You know, that it's the dove because the dove can only look straight ahead. It can't look backwards. Focus me. The Holy Spirit's the searcher. Start searching, Lord, motives and purifying me. The Holy Spirit's the cleanser. Oh, God, release cleansing into my life. The Holy Spirit's the builder. He starts building you so that you don't go low. You stay in a consistent level of life, of overflow in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit's the renewer. He's the renewer. He's the renewer. He's the renewer. Lift your hands and start to pray in the Spirit and say, Oh God, baptize me afresh with the power of the Holy Ghost.